And the winner will take on the winner of Iowa State and Baylor. Jennings and Francis jump it up, and Francis wins the tip. Jamal Shedd gives off here. Houston with the basketball. With a win in this tournament, there is a chance that they could be the one overall seed. In fact, they would likely be the number one overall seed if they win the Big 12 championship. Here's Emmanuel Sharp gets inside. Shot won't go. Fight for the loose ball. And eventually, Robert Jennings pulls it down. You've got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them on the glass. Great look inside, and Jennings with the throwdown. Robert Jennings, the 6'7 sophomore from DeSoto, Texas, and coming off a 10.7 rebound performance against BYU. Big thing, John, when you play Houston, you cannot let them get the first punch in that fist fight. Sharp wide open and buries it. Two times now, Texas Tech has come to double Jawan Roberts, but we've seen how good a passer he is. You look at the guards and you think about Pryor and Shed, but Sharp is someone that you got to deal with. Here's Francis, had it knocked away by McMillan. Let's give you an injury update. Here's Chris Budden. Yeah, Texas Tech Darian Williams is not going to be available today. He has a high ankle sprain that happened yesterday. We even talked with Graham McCaslin this morning. I spoke to him 90 minutes ago. He was anticipating him being able to play today. I'm told he's being held out as a precaution. All right, so Darian Williams out, as is Warren Washington. So it's a shorthanded Texas Tech team and these two schools met in January it was Houston coming up with a win there is Warren Washington and obviously one of the issues for Grant McCaslin is figuring out how do you solve that great defense for Houston yeah John I'm gonna tell you this right now Darian Williams lost is a devastating blow to this team because over the last five, ten games, we've seen it. He's become a tremendous player. Going with Walton handling. Walton, who's done good work since being inserted into the starting lineup. Puts that one up, rattles in and out. And Houston with the ball and the lead, 5-2. Toss inside, Francis had it knocked away. And he draws the foul. Elvin Sampson, head man at Houston, and a guy in his 10th year, and what a job he has done. Oh, he's rebuilt this program, this story program, uh, to new heights. It's the start of the 17th season. Only Gonzaga with more wins. There's Francis, got great deep position, and he puts it home. Francis who stands 6'8", but he's got that long wingspan there without JoJo Tugler is done for the year following foot surgery. Isaac, pull up, that's a two. Roberts, and eventually in the hands of Shed. Jamal Shedd, who grew up just outside of Austin. But it was never really a dream, though, to play at the University of Texas. Glad where he ended up. Fire flips it up a little bit strong. Roberts rebound. That wouldn't go. Jennings has it. Isaacs puts it on the floor. High off the glass. Rebound Francis. And then a the loose ball. And Jamal Shedd was... Boy, a couple guys are down. On that right yep. hand. Across the thumb area. As they continue to work on him. Damian Dunn has checked in. But Houston going a little smaller. Fire gives off. Dunn the temp temple transfer. And that one rattles out. Isaacs with Sharp on him. Pop Isaacs at the basket, feed inside. And Texas Tech with a point blank look, but a contested and not able to hit. Well, Robert Jennings has got to make that shot. And a travel. 
As Francis grimacing, he lost his footing. We touched on it the first two days. For whatever reason, we've seen deep at each end of the court, players lose their footing. And it's been, yeah, slippery at times. Now, there's a little call in the air right now because of the injury to Roberts and, of course, Darian Williams being out. This is Tucson. Steps back. And he'll shoot three free throws. They get the foul on Sharp. The transfer from West Virginia and Iowa, Joe Tucson, has had a solid, solid year for Grant McCaslin, a young man from the Bronx, New York. He said he was excited to grab him because he's an excellent on-ball defender and he's really been a catalyst for that Texas Tech defense this year. Last two games with rough shooting for Tucson, five for 18. Honorable mention in the conference, New York kid, yeah, started at Iowa, then on to West Virginia, and now the Red Raider. Houston with the early lead, game one of two, first semifinal, it's the one seed Houston. And they are the number one team in the country, taking on the four seed Texas Tech. Still to come, it'll be Iowa State and Baylor. And there goes Roberts under his own power, but limping as he heads back to the locker room. Shed will try a three. That's short. And flying in to grab it is Kerwin Walton. Right in, right now, both teams are going to play small and quick. That's a tough shot by Pop. It's not a shot I think Grant McCallum wants right there. He's got to go with a, a hook uh, prior. The Shed grabs the rebound. Yeah, Cryer, and I think got in the way with a foul. There's Sharp, off the mark, done, offensive rebound, and puts it home. That's one of those guys for, for Houston to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. He's got to continue to turn up his game to Temple transfer. He averaged 15 last year for the Owls. Feed inside, and that shot wouldn't go. As... Yolaho wasn't able to hit. Again, Grant McCaslin having to play some different guys. That one from the corner. A three is good for LJ Pryor. The Baylor transfer. He's had a, a big year. All Big 12 second team. And the one thing you can't do, John, is you can't leave Pryor and help in the middle of the lane. Better off letting Shed shoot a layup instead of giving up that three. That's deadly. Houston by seven. John Shabby, Fran Priscilla, and Chris Bud, T-Mobile Center in Kansas City. Tucson traveled. It's a turnover. And break in the action here in KC. Houston with the lead. He told us today something really interesting. He said, if we had JoJo Tucker, we'd be a problem. And you and I looked at each other as like, you know, he probably felt like we really had a chance to win the whole thing yeah. with JoJo. Because... He's an outstanding freshman. Just so active, and we got a chance to see him really get better and better. Pryor, catch and shoot, buries it. Jamal Shedd nods at him. Those two have known each other, what, since third grade? Since third grade. Jamal said once about Pryor, he's the only third grader I've ever played against who had a step back move. <laughs> Those two good friends and roommates. An 8 old Houston run. Walton. Gives off to Isaacs. Pop gets inside as it rejected. There's a nice little set play, John. Watch this flare screen and the pass over the top of the flare. Perfect. Great. That's on time, on target. And one NBA scout told me today one of the things he loves about Jamal Shedd is when he passes the ball, it's always right into his teammate's shooting pocket. Perfect example right there. Isaacs having to force one up. Shot clock winding down. And then the foul on Cedric Lott. And, John, let's talk about this young man, Cedric Lott. He had, they had no intention of playing him this year. He's in his third semester. I asked Kelvin about a month ago, what, what's the story with the big fella? He said, 
we feel like he's a five semester guy meaning like at the end of next season his sophomore year he'd be playing he's been thrust into this team's rotation and he doesn't really know what he's doing yet and that's not a bad thing yep to get the foul uh damian done no i mean look you get a chance to watch kelvin sampson at shoot arounds of practice enough and if the kid is coachable and lot is then with the willingness there will be growth yeah no question just like javier francis we've seen that mcmillan spinning chance mcmillan kicks out to sock and a fight for the rebound and they'll go to the possession arrow it'll stay with texas tech 13 30 to go here in the first half, semifinal number one, the one seed and number one overall team of the country, the Houston Cougars, leading Texas Tech 15 to 5. When you play Houston, John, one of the things you want to do is if you've got a good shot, take it before they turn you over. The problem I've seen so far with Texas Tech is they're taking tough shots, contested shots, not the formula that Grant McCaslin needs right now. Clock winding down, Toussaint got to get something. Ball fair, hoist it up, and that's a shot clock violation. That is sweet music right there to the Houston Cougars when they hear that shot clock violation horn. Graham McCaslin knows what he's in store for here today. An elite level defense his group is going up against. Jed kicks it across to Cryer. Can't hit Tucson. Walt with the extra pass. Kerwin Walt making his 25th straight start. North Carolina transfer kick from Minnesota. Wasn't really making a, much of an impact, but then injuries led him to more playing time. Dunn the steal and the bucket. Damian Dunn with the deuce. And the lead is a dozen for Houston. Great. If you can't teach set plays. You just have to teach concepts. And last night, one of his former players, Tyler Perry, who plays at Kansas State and played with Graham McCaslin at North Texas, came over. They were talking. He said, hey, what do I need to know of what it's like to play against Houston? He said, you got to take the open shot because you may not get a better one. Yeah, if you're open, shoot it. And it's a hard one, right? Because obviously they're not going to give you too many open shots. No. Isaacs. Walton step back, and that one off the mark. And shot flies in for the rebound. It's funny though, isn't it? When asking Chris Button to ask them, who do they remind you of? And the Texas Tech coach said, yeah, Texas Tech. Yep. And Mark Adams was in charge of that defense. And he knows him from competing against Mark Adams. He was their defensive coordinator then under Chris Beard. They went to the final four championship game even. But he competed against him in junior college. Dunn puts it on the floor, pulls up, and hits. Damian Dunn off the bench, and he's got six. Very reminiscent of last night's game against TCU. The only difference is they got up 16-0 on TCU, and TCU never back in that game, strangulated by this defense. Juwan Roberts is back in the game. That shin contusion, so that's good news for Houston. This is, a, this is a clinic now. If you watched Houston last night and tonight, this is a clinic. And one of the things that uh, there's a... Take a look at this, John. Houston doesn't necessarily... This is just a stat that you see Evan Mia there, the dot-com. He's an analytic guy. They lead the country in 10-0 runs. 33. It's more than one a game. And we've seen it throughout the season, you and I. And mainly it's because their defense is so good. They're so hard to score on. Well, right now, they're on a 14-0 run. And consider for just a moment that they're up by 16. And Jamal Shedd hasn't scored yet. Yeah, he doesn't care a thing anyway. And this is another timeout. Time out on the court. We'll be back in 30 seconds to Kansas City. All.
They're going to continue to play their defense. Look at what I love about Dunn taking that charge. I've said this a couple times this year, John. He did not fit into the Houston culture when he first got there. And Kelvin had to browbeat him and browbeat him. And, and this kid is a whole different looking player than the one we saw even two months ago. Look at him. They are relentless. He shot at the basketball fake. Got clock going. winding down. Isaacs from deep and buries it. They needed it. A three from Pop Isaacs. I'll tell you, Damian Dunn is so upset with himself right now because he was such in a great stance. And all Pop did was shoot like a 35-footer. And he had to shoot it because there was no breathing room. Sharp wandering into the paint to the corner. Malik Wilson, a former Texas Tech Red Raider. Fryer gives off. Dunn gets fouled. And Damian Dunn will go to the line and shoot two. Let's take a look at that yeah. from range shot. Yeah. I'm telling you, watch Dunn now. He's ready to guard, except you got to play him like 30 feet out. And before that, look at that reaction. Before that, he was in Pop's grill, and Pop just happened to shoot a shot that Dunn didn't think he would shoot it then. Well, I mean, Pop's previous step, his heel went on the Big 12 logo at midcourt. Yep. So, kudos to Pop Isaacs for knocking it down from deep. You know, all he's got to do is do that consistently the rest of the night. Not easy. It, it, the, the fact that Damian Williams is not in the lineup is a late scratch. Just to me... It's just a devastating loss for a team. He's the white blood of that team in terms of his playing and his intensity. Yeah, Darren Williams, one of their leaders and a guy that they look to, and now out with that ankle injury. Shed, voice and hits his first two of the game. Jamal Shed. He heard you. <laughs> he heard you. He said, oh, Chomby doesn't think I can score? Okay. I just said he hadn't scored. I wasn't <laughs> implying anything, Jamal. But what we know about Jamal is it's not about no. his point. Feed inside. And Yano is foul. All right, ACC tournament semifinal action. Currently, North Carolina, the one seed taking on Pitt. Still to come, Virginia and NC State. NC State knocked off Duke. Yes, they did, and Jeff Capel has done a terrific job with the uh, Pitt Panthers. That's a tough shot. That shot, that's the kind of shot that you want Pop to take. Shed tracks it down, and Houston into the front court. Close in on nine minutes to go first half, and the Cougars leading it by 15. Wilson eyeing and shooting, and that one was almost down, and then... Bounced out. Well, the tough part about that shot is Malik shoots 18% from three, and that really looked like a shot that was going in. No ball there, and Houston back the other way. And Malik Wilson stepped out of bounds. Turnover, 840 to go. Texas Tech basketball. Brad McCaslin, first year as head coach at Texas Tech. Came over from North Texas. He's got deep roots in the state of Texas, obviously, and he's a great fit. And thinking about Darian Williams again, you know, they know they're going to the NCAA tournament, John. They're going to be, a, you know, they're going to have a good seed. And it's probably a discretion, a better part of battle. Nice cut there by... Lamar Washington getting a chance to play some minutes. Lamar Washington, the bucket, and the end one. Nice cut behind the defense. Watch Lamar. You'll see him on the baseline. And he sneaks right in behind that defense. Good finish, young man from Portland, Oregon. Good football play. Mm -hmm. Linebacker not able to hit. Chance McMillan skies for the rebound and puts it in. Might be their best athlete. Chance McMillan as he grabbed that offensive rebound, puts it home, and the lead for Houston down to 11. McMillan had 17 in the win against BYU. Shed will try. 
Oh, Malik Wilson swooping in for the offensive rebound and the throwdown. Well, he made up for the turnover on the sideline because Kelvin Sampson was beside himself, but Malik's become a very reliable sixth man. Washington hands off Toussaint, shot clock winding down. Toussaint from the elbow. Shot clock violation, and there's that defense again. Under eight timeout here in Kansas City. The winner of this one heads to the championship game. Intensity. He's fun to talk to. Yeah, he's very honest. He's uh, going to tell you about his team, the unvarnished truth. And uh, remember, it was that game against Purdue in the NCAA tournament during COVID that really put Grant McCaslin on the map. He upset a number four seed, Purdue Boilermaker. Jed lobbed to Francis, spinning around, and then that shot missed everything. It's been an incredible coaching career for Graham McCasin, but to think about what could have been if he didn't go to Lubbock and follow a girl there that ended up being his wife. The other option was starting a laundry service with Chip Gaines. Yeah, the, the Chip Gaines of Magnolia. Well, that might have worked out pretty good, too, so he might be a win and a win. Yeah. He'd be sitting behind us in the uh, Gucci seats. Yes, that's right. Well, he's, he's from the Scott Drew tree, obviously. Jerome Tang, Matt Driscoll of North Florida. Paul Mills now at Wichita State. Bob Isaac had it knocked away earlier in the year when we were in Lubbock. Chris Budden told the story of how Grant McCaslin and his wife Cece connected. Pretty great romantic story. One of the things even today in his office, Grant McCaslin has a framed jersey that his wife wore as a soccer player in college, which is pretty special. Wilson, and yeah, they get a block on Texas Tech. But part of the part of the reason, let's watch this drive right here. And you see the defender of Washington was never in front of the man with the ball. And it's a good uh, it's a good call right there. But, you know, John, when he was named the head coach at Texas Tech, after all those resume items you talked about, he is a great fit for that community. He really is. They love tough, hard-nosed basketball. He's a great guy, great family man, and he fits like a glove. Breyer with the air ball. Tech back the other way. Isaacs. And yeah, that one from deep. They couldn't hit, out of bounds, one and done. Six to go, first half. And the Red Raiders on the short end as Houston leads 25 to 12. And Grant told us today that he gives Pop a lot of freedom. But sometimes those shots, you know, we were talking about getting them up quick before you turn it over. That one I thought was a little bit too far out of his range. Jet is fouled on that jump shot. You know, John, we've done a lot of Houston games this year, and I've learned a lot of basketball from watching Kelvin's team's practice. The thing that surprised me is I went back and looked at the preseason All-Big 12 team, and there was no Jamal Shedd on there. He was an honorable mention selection. And the coolest thing about his season is that until about late January, it's when I started thinking, like, this guy's actually might be the player of the year in the league. And I, and I thought if Kansas had stayed healthy, it would have been a run between Dickinson, McCullough, and Shedd. But as it was clear that Houston was going to win the league, this guy became almost, uh, you know, automatic by mid-February. Well, what a season they put together, as you mentioned, a, a coach on the court. I mean, to the point, and we asked him about this, that they had it happen one time where... Coach Sampson drew up the wrong play in the huddle. Shed didn't correct him, and they ran the play wrong. And Kelvin Sampson said, you can't do that. You've got to correct me. And so he has license as a leader and a guy who knows the playbook as well as probably anybody on their staff. Oh, yeah. He, he could literally coach the team if the coaching staff left for a week. 
and uh, went on a siesta. And he would hold everybody accountable. Shot clock winding down. McMillan spinning. Didn't get it off. I think that's the third shot clock violation. Houston, the number one defensive team in the country. And Grant McCaslin knew he would be in for a battle. Shed and company so good at that end of the court. Pass Jamal Shed about the influence defensively. Where does it come from? He said his older brother Jalen. That's where he learned to really get down and dig in on the defensive end of the court. Well, I, I said earlier, those shot clock violations are really music to their ears. And they're not able to hit Red Raiders the other way as Washington slows it down. The reason it's so valuable is because you take away the first action with your scouting and then you take away the rest of the play with your uh, uh, instincts. And a good shot right there by McMillan, but... When you get three in the first half, John, it just is an indication of how locked in your defense is versus a team that's already got 20 plus games. And for Kelvin Sampson, the emphasis is always on execution and shed to the point of correcting. He said he doesn't care who's right as long as someone on our side is right. Foul, that'll go the other way. It'll be on Cedric Lott, his second. <laughs> Top four seeds advancing to the semifinals. And for Houston, trying to win the Big 12 championship and secure the number one overall seed in this year's NCAA tournament. Cougars have held Texas Tech to 23% from the floor. That was stripped away from Yalaho. Eighth turnover on Texas Tech. Shed to Sharp. McMillan. That one. And the lead down to 10 for Houston. Chance McMillan with seven. And he caught Jamal Shedd napping because as soon as he caught it, he raised up before Shedd could contest it. And Shedd was, was disgusted with himself. Good, good looking shot. Fryer steps back. Can't hit. And a foul underneath on Lott. And that is his third. Huge quality depth that's been lacking because of the injuries. Emily Yalaho at the line, four for 16 from the stripe, and he buries the first. Looks pretty good, John. Young man that uh, they were going to redshirt this year from Finland, high school in Cleveland. Good looking player. They've had to throw him into the lineup, and he's had some good moments. And that bench is celebrating like he just uh, won the lottery. 7-0 Texas Tech run. By the way, Damian Dunn back on the court. He's wearing number six instead of 11. Obviously, some blood on his shirt. McMillan in transition buries a three, and all of a sudden, it's a five-point game. Well, when it comes to grit and toughness, obviously, Houston's got boatloads of it, but so does Tech. Pass went to the corner. Cryer had it. McMillan was on him, and like four guys on the bench. Offensive foul. Well, we've seen that in this tournament. They are not going to allow the shooter to make contact if he kicks that leg out. And Ray Natilli was right on that. We couldn't see it from where we were, but he was pretty adamant. About that, that's the equivalent of a defensive flop if you shoot it and kick your leg out. And where Ray Matilda had his advantage point, that's what he saw. So that foul will be on Damian Dunn, his third. Yahoo! Wow! Barry 
misses a three, and all of a sudden, Texas Tech within two. How about the came at a perfect time. They're right back in this ball game. Houston led by as many as 16. Grant McCaslin without Warren Washington, without Darian Williams, and minutes in this one to Emily Yalaho, Lamar Washington. Shot wouldn't go. There's Washington flying in for the board. Texas Tech could take the lead with a three. Turn over to go back the other way. And Warren tried to throw a one-hand pass that uh, the defense got a handle on it. And Graham McCaslin not happy. Sharp leaves his feet, gives off Shed. Done. Done inside the three-point arc. It's a two, and it'll go. And he certainly helped the cause, Damian Dunn, with eight points. Under 90 seconds to go, the Red Raiders have turned this back into a game. Isaacs finds Yalaho, takes it at the basket, had it knocked away, and a turnover. It's off Yalaho, and that's the 10th turnover on Texas Tech. Well, he caught that ball in traffic. As he opened up and looked for the pass from Isaacs and couldn't control it and get it up on the glass. You don't see this happen often, but Houston got caught sleepwalking the last five minutes. And if you know anything about Texas Tech's season, they are fighters. Shed trying to feed Dunn, working on Walton. Dunn has it ripped away, and they get a foul on Dunn, and that'll be number three. Well, I said early, John, when you play Houston, you have to deal with the bully on the block. And right now, take a look. Steal and foul, and they're going to foul a really good shooter. And when you play Houston... You, you can't lose the game because you're fearful of going at them. That uniform that says Houston will intimidate many teams, but not this Texas Tech team. They're in a street fight right now. Walton at the line. And knocks it down. Cohen Walton, who mentioned his 25th straight start, really got his playing time increased. This Dunn will sit with three fouls, but Walton got a chance to play when Devin Cambridge... Suffered a season-ending knee injury December 6th. Now to, to your point, John, he was averaging less than two points a game until the injury. In the last 25 games, he's averaging about ten and a half. Quarter three, Cryer gets it to go. Uh, I know what Grant McCaslin's thinking. No matter who is on the court for Houston, do not leave L.J. Cryer. Isaacs directing traffic, Houston by five, McMillan did a good first half chance, McMillan with ten, Yalaho off the glass and in, how about Emily Yalaho with seven points, he had 32 points the whole season coming in, Shed turns, fires, won't go, and we go to the break and Houston has a three point advantage. A 17-5 run. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty safe bet. So Houston ball to begin the second half as T-Mobile Arena is filling up. Semifinal number two coming at you after this one. It'll be Baylor and Iowa State. Sharp fires and hits Emmanuel Sharp from straight on from three. You just cannot leave him. That time, Pop Isaacs was looking into the lane at Sharp and Cryer. You got to make them drivers. Toussaint got deep position now outside. 
Indeed, inside. And Jennings able to draw the foul. Good ball movement there. Houston leading it by six. That foul on Francis, his first. A peek at the first half stats. There's that run that Fran alluded to, 17-5. Both teams with a run of 13-0 or, or better. And Tech with three comebacks this year, 15 or more points. And they were down 15 at the half to a really good BYU team at home and battled back. And one thing Grant McCaslin has done with this program, you know, they had it under Beard, they had it under Adams. But that grit and toughness is certainly uh, evident this past season in his first season. Good to see uh, Roberts out here. John, he is limping. I'm just telling you, he's limping right now. Yeah, definitely not at 100 percent. Tucson takes it away as Shed turns it over. Isaac spinning, being harassed, and now Tucson pulls up, hits and one. You know, you look at Houston right now. Their body language on the court is one of bewilderment. Take a look right here, Tucson. Joe pulls up, knocks it down. Shed gets a little bit of the body. And it's almost like a heavyweight champion who thought he was going to knock out the opponent in the third round. And all of a sudden, we're into the seventh, and they're trading haymakers. Toussaint completes the three-point play. Joe Toussaint with six. It's a one-point game. Shed sitting after picking up the foul. Malik Wilson, the former Red Raider, is checked in. Sharp hesitates, gets inside, flips it up. That's short. Out of bounds. And it'll be Red Raider basketball. So a chance for Texas Tech to take the lead. Their one and only lead in this game was 2-0. Kelvin Sampson... Taking a seat, a little frustrated right now. Toussaint puts it on the floor, feeds Jennings. And that pass a little too high for Walton. Out of bounds, and it'll be Houston basketball. John, I'm watching. Roberts and I, I think there's got to be a point now listen Kelvin Sampson's a Hall of Famer He's got a million more wins than I do But at some point he's got to wonder whether it's better to rest this guy the rest of this game and He certainly knows his team way better than me, but it, it, Jamal Jawan looks like he's uh, Either like 60% out there and again. We were told a shin contusion Shot clock under 10. Roberts backing down, spinning, left hand, and that rolls in. It almost reminds me, I'm, I'm old enough to remember Willis Reed. Sure. You watch those highlights against the Lakers. And what I love about that guy, man, you're going to have to, I'm sure he wants to be out there, and he does want to be out there, but man, is he tough. Isaac puts it on the floor at the basket, and one. And a chance to tie it up. That's a drive with force right now. And when you play a team with the toughness of Houston, you got to go right up their nose. Perfectly done. Watch this. Right through Sharp. And that's exactly how you have to play. When I say bully on the block, I obviously, I obviously mean that figuratively. Because they are arguably one of the toughest teams in the country. And Pop Isaacs completes the three-point play. And we got ourselves a ball game. 37 apiece. Just getting going second half. John Chambi, Fran Priscilla, Chris Budden. Yeah, Roberts is hurting. Saw that leg almost buckled on him there. Sharp will fire. And hit Emmanuel Sharp. And I'm telling you, that's the third time that Pop Isaacs has given up a three. Wilson can't shoot it. You leave him open. You don't leave Sharp open. Gallaho gives off Toussaint. Toussaint bullying his way to the basket. Kick out Walton. Shot clock under 10. 
Yalaho wide open to the basket, and he gets fouled. Well, you, you, uh, Tech has done a great job of spreading that defense out. Yalaho kind of sleight of hand right there. Houston expecting to blow up a handoff, and he faked it and got to the basket. This young man, a late bloomer. Finland, John, think about it. NBA players from Finland, Laurie Markinen, Hano Meadow, who, sure. run, who runs the Finnish Basketball Academy. And uh, this kid, Finland, he's out here in the Big 12. It's kind of cool. Juwan Roberts is going to grab a seat. You would crush on Jeopardy basketball players from Finland. <laughs> Miro Little. There you go. Okay. There's another. Come on, man. I could put a team together. I know. <laughs> Sazu Zalin. Wilson jumper. Got it. As he books the two. Houston leading it by four. And Malik Wilson with that many. Six double team gets it to Tucson. McMillan to Yalaho. Feed inside Tucson. Good job to slap it out to Isaacs. That feed inside wouldn't fall. Francis the rebound. Shag, quick move at the basket, and he draws the foul. Jamal Shedd will shoot two when we come back. His Cougars hit a ball game. It's a four-point game. ESPN's... Well, Pop Isaacs has meant so much to this team, and it's a word that you don't hear often, guys, nowadays in college basketball, the word loyalty and sticking with a team through a coaching change. Yeah, and he's a guy that's got a lot of grit, and one of the things with Grant McCaslin and his relationship with Pop Isaacs, there are times when he doesn't always take the most effective or probably the best percentage shot and pop isaac says tell me you have yeah. to tell me but he also has the ability to take big shots this season no yeah. doubt he that's that's exactly what coach mccaslin said yep. is that he wants to save us and you need <laughs> players like that right yes yes there's a lot of guys that shy away from big moments and that is and yeah, that is not Popeye's no. he wants it yep and he loves competing out here against Good guys time. like Pryor and Shed yep Lob. Yalaho I've been indoctrinated into the club not a, the other way not a, not a lob I like and Wilson the bucket but wave it off and a foul on Kerwin Walton all right SEC tournament and one semifinal is set. Mississippi State and Auburn, Kentucky, and Texas A&M currently taking place. And later on, it'll be Alabama and Florida. You surprised Tennessee lost? Yes, yeah, I, I really was. I mean, because they're built to go deep into the NCAA tournament, and uh, it's a, just a bad loss. That's a two for Jamal Shedd. Uh, what do we know about Jamal Shedd, John? If he thinks he needs to score, he can score. He had 29 against this team in that only meeting. And ever so slowly, a 9-1 run, and they've built up an eight-point lead. Toussaint try to split the defense. Kick out, McMillan. And Toussaint, offensive rebound. They came from the Bronx, fighting down low. Kick up ahead. Wilson and the stuff. Great work by Jamal Shedd to find his teammate Malik Wilson. And now we've got Javier Francis. He's kind of holding his left eyebrow. He's not coming out of the game, man. This is rock'em, sock'em robots here. It's been that way all year in this league, John. And you know, I normally don't think a league beats itself up. Yeah. Because we've seen five of these teams get to the Elite Eight, two national champions, but so many injuries right now late in the year. McMillan swings it. Isaacs, little floater. That shot deflected. Yalaho was stepping on the baseline out of bounds. 
And it'll be Houston basketball. For you younger kids out there, Rock'em Sock'em Robots, <laughs> Google it. And ask your parents if they can get their hands on them for Christmas, because I think you'd enjoy it. It's an old school present and toy that I think you'd like. I would agree. Wilson backing down, and they get the foul on Isaac. So foul on Pop, his first. You know, I'm just taken back to the other end. Javier Francis blocked a what seemingly was a jump shot. And he's averaging six points, five rebounds a game. I think he's the most valuable six and five guy in the country. He is a great defender. Pryor with a three, knocks that down, and all of a sudden, it's a 13-point advantage. Well, Houston, king of the runs in college basketball. It's an 11-0 run. Even at full strength, this is an undersized Houston team. They forced the turnover. They sustained another injury here tonight. Jawan Roberts sustaining the shin contusion. And there he is. And John Hasselberger telling us how the Cyclones have won the battle of points off turnovers in every game but two out of their 32 this year. Yep. Shed, pull up jumper. He gets fouled. Toussaint didn't like the call. Yeah, and this is vintage Jamal Shed. Tries to figure out what the game needs. And obviously, he's going to give you the effort on the defensive end, the ability to get his teammates open. But when he has to get points, he can do that. Knocks down the free throw. Shed. Mitch, grew up just outside of Austin. When I asked him, okay, if you hadn't gone to Houston, where would you have gone? He said, probably Colorado State and Coach Nico. As he yeah, yeah. And by the way, they have another great point guard up there, Isaiah Stevens from Dallas. And uh, that would have been an incredible backcourt. I, I just love the way, and, and Chris pointed it out going back to his freshman year, just the way he's grown and grown and grown into this incredible leader and player. Gallaho grabs it and gives back to Sun. No, rejects that. And then McMillan's pass offline. It's a turnover. That is 15 turnovers for the Red Raiders. I'm going to guess that we won't see Juwan Roberts the rest of the night. I, I just don't think they need him. They're playing for so much bigger next week. Wilson backing down off the glass. That wouldn't fall. Eventually, Washington has it. Beat up ahead. Yellow hole. Walton tries to save it. Francis will track it down. Francis at the basket gets it to go. Pretty nice play by the big guy at 6'8. John, they do that layup every single day. And Kelvin Sampson tells his team. Don't get bored if you're getting better. This is not JV high school here. That will help you. And you just saw the young man who's improved so much over four seasons. Three of them playing and one is a red shirt. And this is the development program of Houston. When this kid came as a freshman, there were about five guys better than him up front. Watch this. I mean, that's just beautiful, John. Here, we watch him at the end of practice today. I think they call it the Daily Dozen or the Dirty Dozen. And they work on different kinds of layups. And when he got here, it was the late Reggie Chaney, who we should talk about because he was such a big part of this team. But, you know, Fabian White and uh, Grisham and all those kids that he learned from to become the player he is not, he's one of the most important players on the best team in the country. McMillan ball fake. That's a three. And Dunn pulls down the rebound. Damian Dunn normally wears number 11, wearing number six. His jersey either got ripped or had blood on it. Yeah, so 
switched it out from 11 to 6 and no name on the back. We got five guards out there right now. Sharp underneath. Off the glass wouldn't fall. Walton, that three, that wouldn't fall. Prior rebounds. I'm sure they've done this this year, but because of all the injuries right now, you're looking at a team with five guards out there. Pretty good team. Fryer, and he knocks it down, and it is all Houston. A 19-point advantage. Wow. And when Cryer and Sharp and Shed make those shots, uh, they do it better than anybody. And, John, I've seen... Nine games in person, no, actually 11 now, about 15 practices. I, I just love listening to him coach basketball. I don't learn basketball from him. I learn how to coach basketball when you listen to him. Inside, good feed inside. Washington couldn't hit. But eventually, Kerwin Walton has it. Walton will try. And hit. And Kelvin said it. They've got that three in the back pocket. And they're going to need a few more of those. He's yelled at his team to rebound. And Kerwin Walton, an elite level three point shooter, is, he knocks it down at about a 47% clip. John, I honestly haven't seen one bad practice this year. Like, there's not one time I went to a Houston practice and I said, wow, they, they're, they're, not, bad they're not into yeah. it today. And, I, and, and the best line I've heard all year. And I've heard I've heard him say this at clinics. There's three guys that can never have a bad practice the coach The best player and the point guard and in this case Shed's got two of the three covered Kelvin's got the third part covered. It's incredible how much they respond to his coaches Prior flips it up and He got the foul on Chance McMillan You know, earlier this season, I asked Kelvin Sampson what kind of guy they recruit. He goes, we don't recruit, we evaluate. When I go into a gym, it's not just, can this guy shoot? Can he do this? I want to know what your attitude is going to be like when I ask you to come to the gym at 6 a.m. in the morning. And they do it starting in the summer, Chris. When they get back for summer session, they are they are putting the time in. And, uh, you know, I, I, I you remember Quentin Grimes, who's now in the NBA. Absolutely. With he went, he, yeah, and, and Houston. When, it, when he left, I, I'm convinced that if he stayed at Kansas with Bill Self, he would have been an NBA player. But when he transferred and he came, when he was out on the market, I said, let's see where he goes. Because he could have gone a lot of places. And when he chose to go back home to Houston, I said, this kid still wants to be coached hard. And the rest is history. He's, on, he's in the NBA now, thanks to this guy. And he never lets these guys take a day off in practice. Texas Tech got to find their footing for the offensive end. Not an easy task against the top defense in the country as Toussaint draws the foul. And the kid from the Bronx will go to the line and shoot two. You and I remember the great New York City Catholic League, the CHSAA. This young man played at Cardinal Hayes High School in the Bronx. Uh, probably the most famous Cardinal Hayes alum, Jamal, Jamal Mashburn. Mashburn. Yeah. Yep. You know, we watched Darian Williams today. In fact, I asked him about the injury yesterday, and I said, man, did you think it was a knee? Were you worried? He said, I was worried, but didn't know until we got here tonight that he wasn't going to play. And if it's precautionary, I get it because he's so important to this team. His energy and toughness matches anybody on the floor that Houston has, which is why he's going to be a special player the ne next couple years. And I think, I, I think Chris... You, Chris, you thought we thought he was going to play, correct? Williams? Yeah. Yeah, we were told uh, it's shoot around today, and then I talked with Graham McCaslin 90 minutes before the game, and he said he expected him to play. He kind of thought that it would be ginger at first at the start, but they thought that he could warm up and he would start feeling better. So uh, whatever happened before when they arrived at the arena until Tiff decided to keep him out. Shed with an emphatic three right there, and... A dozen for Jamal Shed the lead back to 19. So yeah, no Warren Washington, no Darian Williams. 
Tech fighting back from an early 16-point deficit, eventually able to tie it, but now it is all Houston under 10 to go. Sharp fires, and he will go to the line and shoot three. Emmanuel Sharp. It's another guy that redshirted. He broke his leg as a high school senior. Great shooter, coached by his dad, Derek, and another one of those guys, John, that just buys in, has become a really good all-round player in addition to that great stroke. Folks, Big 12 now at ESPN Plus. It's a must-have for Big 12 fans. Baseball and softball seasons are in full swing. More than 450 matchups available. Most of the games from both conference championships are available. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today, ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. Biggest lead of the game for Houston, up by 22. Trying to punch their ticket for the championship tomorrow, where they will await the winner of Baylor and Iowa State. And that's a travel, yeah. Well, when you play pick and roll basketball, you got to expect that double team. And it's not just Pops, it's not his fault at all because you need three outlets versus that trap. And Pop couldn't find anybody of his teammates to come rescue him. Jet has it taken away by Yalaho, and then they throw it away. Ouch. And that's just an experience. Just like Lott playing for Houston, Yalaho played very little for most of the season. Thrust into the lineup, and he's going to have growing pains. We've seen some great moments from him today. This program at Tech is in incredible shape because they have a terrific coach. John, 23 wins already heading to the tournament. 18 turnovers for Tech in this one that matches a season high, but they will be into the big dance. Shot clock winding down. Cryer's got a fire. And eventually tipped out, and Sharp will set it back up. Now Shed. Coach Sampson wants some movement, but he's got a little pick and roll action here with Shed. Sharp corner three. Got it. Well, I know this. I'm no genius, but you don't leave Sharp and Cryer open. You let anybody else shoot it. Actually, including Shed. But not those two guys. Too many of those shots today have been uh, daggers. Out of bounds, another turnover, and it's Houston basketball. Yeah, and that time the freshman sets the screen, but he doesn't roll all the way, and he can't read Pop's mind, so he stops. Jet inside, Pops Francis for the throwdown. And the lead is ballooned to 27. Inside. And Toussaint draws the foul. All Houston here in Kansas City. The Cougars. Seven minutes to balloon to a 27 point Houston advantage. You want to have a little deja vu? Wade Taylor, the fourth, has 28 right now in that game versus Kentucky, and you saw him almost single handedly bring the Aggies back against the Houston team that was up, what, 20 points? Yep. And I remember talking to Jamal Shedd earlier in the year because I went back and watched the tape, and he cooked Jamal. It doesn't happen much. And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, he got me. And right now, looks like a and in control over the Kentucky Wildcats. Jawan Roberts suffering a shin contusion in this one for Houston. And that's worth watching for what should be a championship date with either Iowa State 
for Baylor. Pulls it on seven to go. John Chomby, Fran Fraschilla, Chris Button. And Shed fires that one up. Off the mark, Isaac grabs and Texas Tech on the go. Pop not able to hit as that shot was contested and eventually McMillan pulls it away and he gets fouled by LJ Pryor. LJ trying to do something that's never been done in college basketball history and that would be win a national championship with two different programs. In, and by the way, in the same conference, do you know who came closest, John? Can you give me a hint? Uh, Indiana was where he won his uh, championship, and I and I'll I do actually. Then the other one was Kansas. It was right. That was in, oh, remember the coach Bob Bender? Bobby yeah. Bender. He won it at Indiana. He was on the '76 team. Oh, okay. and, he, and then he played for Duke in 78, the team that lost to Kentucky in the final. Okay. But LJ Pryor trying to make it. I'm, I'm old, by the way, so I know all this <laughs> useless information, except when it's a blowout. Sharp. Francis kicks out Shed. They'll set it back up. Cryer fires and hits LJ Cryer with three more and he's got 20. That's that little step back he's been working on since third grade according to Jamal Shedd. LJ won that championship as a role player at Baylor obviously. And the stuff for Yalaha. Let me ask you this. Has this kid maybe earned himself some higher leverage minutes? In the NCAA tournament, and I, and, well, possibly because of injuries, but more importantly, I, I like to see how he's going to look 12 months from now after getting more coaching from Grant McCaslin and his staff, because he definitely looks the part. Sharp step back, fires. Look at Francis. Wow. Long arms yeah. and pulls down that rebound. And he's not trying to do anything with it except kick it out. And he knows his role. Pulls in on five to go. And the lob for Francis, and he throws it down. I'm telling you, his teammates ought to take Jamal Shedd out to dinner at least three nights a week. <laughs> at least three nights. Spend a little of that NIL money. Because he's worth it. Yalaho. And yeah, that three wouldn't fall. Wilson. It is all Houston as they lead by 26. We were at a walkthrough, John, a month ago, and Kellen Sampson, the associate coach, came over to us and he said, I, I don't know how we're going to ever replace this guy. And they won't. And it, it won't happen. They'll get somebody else that's different, but. They will not ever find a guy, I think, to replace Jamal Shedd. Shot clock winding down, Shedd cross court, and that one actually deflected. It'll be Houston basketball with 1.3 to go. 4-12 left, and the number one seed and number one team in the country, the Houston Cougars. Going to be headed to the championship. They'll await the winner of Iowa State and Baylor. Uh, more than likely, if Houston wins the Big 12 championship, they will be the number one overall seed in this year's NCAA tournament. And Lamar Washington foul on the floor. 3.50 to go in KC. 75-49 our score. ESPN's exclusive press has got to be happy with the way his team has responded. Texas Tech came up with a big comeback down 16. They tied the game at 37, and since then it has been all Houston. Boog, every year Kelvin Sampson does an assignment with his 
team. He has them sit down and he shares a story. He says, I want you to imagine you're at war and you're hiding in a bunker. You get to pick two of your teammates to go run out of the bunker, go grab you some ammunition and come back. Those are going to be the people that keep you alive. I want you to write down two names. And when he does it, he takes it. He never tells everybody who they wrote down. It's for him to know which of his teammates, which of the guys on his team they look to for leadership. He didn't have to do it this year because he said, I know everyone is going to write down two names. That's going to be Jamal Shedd and Jerron Roberts. And he said, actually, that's a lie. They write down every single one of their teammates because that's how the trust has been built between this group. Well, Jerron Roberts has been watching most of this second half and yeah there's a lot of trust with this team that is a great nugget and i think it speaks to the the culture that's been created by kelvin sampson back houston 10th season and a chance for the houston program's 730 win season the sixth under kelvin sampson at three in a row my term for those two guys, Chris and John, is, is culture warriors. They embody this culture of toughness and accountability as well as anybody Kelvin has coached. And that guy is a culture yeah, warrior yeah. also because he knows his role. You're not going to see him shooting threes or doing anything crazy. Just do his job. Houston fans making some noise here in Kansas City. Good look inside. Jennings is fouled. Well, on Sunday, Houston will find out if they, in fact, are the number one overall seed. Selection Sunday, and we've got you covered. Six Eastern Sports Center on ESPN. Reese and the guys will deliver with bracketology, breakdowns of every region. And then at 8 Eastern, the women's selection special, the bracketology at 9 Eastern. John, they'll be in the South Regional, likely going to Memphis first. And then they will be in the regional final if they advance in the second weekend in Dallas. So a couple of easy trips. As you see, uh, Kelvin, Kelvin Sampson going to the bench. And a good effort today by Shed, Shed Cryer, Francis. Ryan Elvin has checked in for Houston, a fan favorite. Well, he was balling on senior day. He got seven quick points. Timeout, Houston. 206 to go. It's a 24 point Cougar advantage. LJ, I don't know, 40 yeah. years. Something like that, yeah. Ducks in a barrel. <laughs> Holy cow. Ducks in the road. I mean, how about if we shoot ducks That's in the That's the way better? the cookie bounces, right? Okay. <laughs> Come on. Game clock under two minutes. All Houston. Sharp going to work inside. Oh, and good feed finds lock for the flush. That's so good. I'm telling you. But we, for most of the Big 12 season, Cedric Lott was a non-factor. He was supposed to not play very much, but uh, he works hard, and his teammates love the idea that he's been thrust into the limelight a little bit and delivering. That's cool. Kid from the Ivory Coast, Richard Freshman. Free throw rattles off. Houston by 26. And again, it'll be Baylor and Iowa State coming up. A little 2-3 zone now by Houston just to change it up a little bit. Washington not able to hit. Sharp pulls down the rebound. And Kelvin just wants to use a little clock right here. This is their version of motion offense. Side to side. Elvin had his shot blocked. Yamaha not able to hit. He 
Emmanuel Sharp with 17 points here. Four rebounds, couple of assists. That's Dunn eyes it up. Shot clock winding down. Dunn pulls up. Can't hit. McMillan rebounds. The Houston Cougars are headed to the Big 12 championship game after already winning the regular season title. And they will await the winner of our second semifinal between Baylor and Iowa State. You know the folks from Ames will be loud and in full effect as they call it Hilton South here in Kansas City.